Hello everyone, this is Thomas Wagner, also known as Gamer Chaplain or Chaplain, depending on uh, how you know me and where you know me from. Um, I noticed that uh, growing up, we used to call them pound signs or number signs, and now it's hashtag. I guess it could have always been called hashtag, but in the digital age, in the age of the internet, this World Wide Web and everything else that goes along with it, Twitter, Facebook, we now have hashtag such as hashtag happy hour or hashtag smile or hashtag oh no or hashtag puppy love. Uh, I seen one today on Twitter called hashtag Wednesday motivation. So I'm going to do a Wednesday motivation. And I want to also ask you if you would please like this and share it and spread the word. Um, but, you know, people tell you... Uh, or people say, I should say, or people proclaim that God is dead, uh, that Jesus lived long ago and he died, and that's that. It's over with. He's done. He's not here. He's not around. He's not coming back. It's been so long, 2,000 years plus, and no return. Is that really true? Has Jesus not returned? Well, you know, that all depends on how you look at things, if your eyes are open or not, if you're just completely cut off because you want to be part of the in crowd or the cool people that uh, you see around that totally disrespect God or uh, just close their eyes and become blinded to the fact of the things that go on in life. Um, the miracle of birth, uh, you say, well, uh, it's just evolution that, you know, we evolved from this pool of slime uh, primordial ooze and we developed you know well, you know uh, survival of fittest why don't we have night vision in our eyes why don't we see like cats and smell like dogs and uh, why don't we move like cheetahs um, I could think those would be better I mean I like to be able to move like cheetah I mean even my size I'd be like wow need a ride to work honey hop on my back let's go but you know evolution is a downright lie. And for people to tell you that God's dead is a downright lie. And for people to tell you that Jesus died long ago and that's that and it's over is another lie. Because, you know, we see many things taking place even today. Miracles, uh, alcoholics set free, drug addicts set free, people healed and delivered. I'm not talking about uh, all the fancy uh, show performances or uh, the ones who claim that if you send a seed, God will protect your daughter. I heard that before and I despise that. I despise that with my whole heart. I heard somebody on a telethon one time sit there and say, there's a mother out there who's praying God to protect her daughter because she's gone out with her friends out driving. Well, if you sow a seed, then God's going to protect your daughter. You know what? Shut up. Just shut your mouth and go away. Because God cannot be bought. Actually, God bought us back with a price. The price of Jesus Christ, his dear son, who lived and died for us. God paid a price. He's not telling you, give me your money. And I'll protect you. Give me your money and I'll save you. Give me your money and this or that. It's bull. And you need to come forth before people and say, I was sorry, I'm sorry, and I was out of line and I was wrong. Sadly, that was years ago, and I don't know if the person's still around, and I don't even know how their ministry's doing. But when people start saying that, Sow a seed that God will bless you. Sow a seed. Yeah, God will bless you if you give to him, obviously, because you can't outgive God. But sow a seed so God will protect you. Sow a seed so God will deliver your daughter from a car accident tonight. Sow a seed so your, da so your daughter will be safe when she goes out. Are you kidding me? Go find your money somewhere else. Back to the topic. I digress. I'm sorry. But anyways, so you hear that Christ is dead. You hear that God is dead. If that's the case, if we have no hope for an afterlife that's better than this, I'm sorry, I would not want to do a rerun performance after living, suffering, and dying 
in this life. I would not want to come back and do it again. Sorry, no reincarnation. However, the Bible does say that Jesus did die. In Hebrews 2, 14 through 15, For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus, also himself likewise took part of the same. He became like us. Um, the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily within him. The word of God became flesh. We know him as Jesus. And that's the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God. It's all Jesus. But he partook of the same as us. Our sufferings, our flesh, our bones, our blood, our bodies. He put on the same body as we have. That through death he might also destroy him. Who? The devil. That had the power of death. Were, that is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Hebrews 2, 14 through 15. Why did Jesus come and live and die for us? That he could set us free. That he could set us free from the power that Satan had over us. That when we died, we belonged to him because we sinned. And we were sinners. Sin, you know, you hear that and then people, you know, some people mock. Oh, sin, sin, sin. Oh, sin's good. Sin City. Let's go to Sin City. You know, I sin. I sin on a daily basis. I love sinning. Sinning feels good. Yeah, you know, all that may be true. Downright true. But it's the result of sin. Are you willing to pay the price? You know, Jesus came, lived, and died. Absolutely. But he did that for us. That we may have life eternal with God. The breaking news. God is not dead. Christ is not dead. Revelations 1.18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead. Speaking back to what we just uh, read. He came and he partook of our life and he died that he might break the power the devil had over us. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Revelations 1.18. So he partook of our, uh, the same body, the bone, the flesh, the blood as us. The same uh, temptations, the same uh, enemies coming against him. The same hardships and problems we had. Uh, the same turmoils tormented him and tried to get him to do wrong. But he didn't. So he lived and he died. And he did it for us. That he might break the power the enemy had over us through death and in death. And what did he do? He took the keys. So if he has the keys, that means he has the power over death and the grave. And that power consists of this. Those who believe in him. Those who believe in the one true God and his son that he sent, Jesus Christ. And love him. Will one day rise to live with them for eternity. That is why Jesus came, that we might have fellowship with God now and when we face our last breath on earth, that when our eyes open next, we'll be in the presence. And one day as children of God, we'll hear, enter into your reward. But to those that mock, to those that say he's dead, to those that say he's nothing more than a good man that lived long ago and is dead, uh, to those that neglect the fact that he is the Christ, the Son of God. That eternity is separation from God. And it won't be a party. It will not be a party. So I encourage you, on your Wednesday Wisdom, know that there is hope. And that God is not dead. God is not dead. God is not dead. He lives. This is Wednesday Motivation. I'm going to do the hashtag Wednesday Motivation. I would like it if you please like this and share it. And spread the word that God is not dead. 
and that Christ died for us to set us free from sin, sickness, death, and the grave. Where is thy victory? Where is thy sting, O death? Where is thy victory, grave? Or maybe vice versa. I'm not perfect. I don't know. I don't claim to be. Matter of fact, I have a lot of battles, a lot of demons I fight. My past, I may share it one day on here. But I do know that Jesus is very much alive. That God is very much alive. And that they both love you just the way you are. And are waiting for you to turn to them. That's very simple. And you know what? Let me pray for you. God, and I hope you would agree with me in this prayer. Just open your mind for a moment. I'm not going to say God save me or anything like that. Okay, just open your mind. And if you agree, I mean, I dare you to agree with me. What have you got to lose? Just with an open heart and open mind, say, God, if what this person is saying is true, if you're alive, if Jesus is your son, make yourself real to me. And Father, I pray you make yourself real to them. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless.